Hello, my name is Spencer, and today we are looking at Spike Air Volleyball, which is a, as you probably guessed, a volleyball game with some light management elements for your team. It's an early access. This just came out within the last week, and I think they've got a pretty good start with this one. Um, let's look at the settings first. Video, you can do full screen, borderless, windowed. You have a lot of resolution options here. You're not really going to need to worry about this game being a system hog. It's pretty easy to run. You can have VSync on or off here with a few options. You can limit the FPS if you want to. The graphic settings are grayed out. I'm not sure if they're planning on adding more settings to this because it's automatically set to high. Um, so there's no way to adjust that right now. You've got pretty basic audio sliders here. It might be nice to have the option, some games have an option for the type of um, audio that you're, you're using, like headphones or speakers or something like that, and they can kind of optimize the audio. It might be nice to have something like that here. So, not a whole lot in the options menu. There is a tutorial mode where you can learn how to play. It'll walk you through the steps. I'm just going to play a game or two and just talk about what's going on. There's no practice mode yet. I'm not sure what's going to be in the practice mode because if you go to exhibition, you can just play versus the computer. And I would consider this to be like the practice mode. You can also do player versus player. I don't, there's nobody else to play with. I'm not sure how to set up a second controller or another keyboard or something like that. Or you can have computer versus computer if that's what you want to do. You can adjust which team it is. I'm not sure if these teams have different stats. I don't, I don't know of any information. It just changes the team's jersey color. And you can uh, change, I, I believe the player level is what level players on your team are. So 10 would be the highest, the best, and 1 would be the worst. And then you can adjust the computer level if, if you want to play against an opponent that's like really easy. You can set it all the way down here. Or if you want to set it a lot higher, you can face a computer that is a lot harder. The court, I think this just changes the colors on the court. It's it's purely aesthetic. And you can change the max score. You don't have to go all the way up to 25. You can you can set it lower if you don't want to play for for that long. So that's that. And then my club is really the the meat of this. This is a tournament basically. It, or it's like a it's 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 like a franchise mode, I guess. I already started another team, but I'm I'm gonna start a new one. Mm, if you're using the controller, there's no on-screen keyboard that comes up, so you're just gonna have to type it in with the keyboard. I'm just gonna name them the Cardinals because I don't know what else to use. Okay, so. Before you start, you have to recruit players. So, I believe, I think I can recruit all of these people if I want to. And and there's no way to like re-roll these, so whatever you get is, is what you get. So, you're level five. I'm gonna take all the level fives, obviously. I'll take a level one to try to train them up, maybe a level two. I think I, yeah, I think I can just recruit everybody here. Um, but they all have different stats here. Strength, dexterity, speed, jump, stamina. Stamina is about how quickly they can move around in the court. Jump, you're going to want somebody with good jump so they can block. Speed, I'm sorry, I mixed that up. Stamina, stamina is how tired they get. Speed is how quickly they move around the court. That's my mistake. Strength will determine how hard they can spike the ball, how hard they can hit it, basically. And dexterity is like accuracy. So if they have low dexterity, there's a chance that they're going to miss 
hits. Which is something I've noticed when I'm playing the game is that sometimes I swear I'm pressing the button to, to spike or dump the ball and my one of my teammates just misses for some reason. I think that might be the, the low dexterity or maybe I'm just pressing wrong, but it, it seems to happen kind of consistently. So in between games, you can do these different workouts for different players. Okay, so I'm going to pause it right here because I messed up explaining this. The trainings, what you have to do is set your players to different trainings. And then after they level up from playing a game, whatever trainings they were set to, those are the stats that they will level up. The trainings are not a passive thing that goes on in the backgrounds. You have to play games and earn experience and then you'll level up. I just wanted to make that clear. Not a passive thing. It's dependent upon experience that you gain when you're playing games. I just wanted to be really clear about that. So the other thing I noticed when I was looking at this is if you're looking at workout here, right, it increases strength a lot. There are three plus signs. If we look over on this other screen at Hughes and we have this guy do the workout training, will his strength increase from 8 to 11? Is each plus sign one level? So when he gets enough experience points, the strength will go from 8 to 11? Or how how does that work? It's, it's not made clear. I have good jump, so I can put you there. And everybody else, well, your jump is not that great either. And I can have them train. And in between games, those stats will increase. I'm not quite sure how much it increases with each training. It doesn't say anywhere on here. So that would be nice to know. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to get some random people. It doesn't really matter. Um, but these are all the different settings. I'm not even going to bother to train a bunch of other people. Well, you know what? I'll just set these. I'll set these to scrimmage because this trains all of these different skills a little bit. You can see uh, right here with scrimmage, it increases everything a little bit. Some of this stuff increases strength and stamina dexterity so you can try to level up your players in in a certain way so now with this season um the these are the brackets you start over here on the left and then you make your way to like the semifinals and then the finals there are eight brackets all right i guess we can call them weeks eight weeks eight levels, whatever you want to call them, in the tournament. I've never gotten all the way over here and actually won like a week of tournaments or one week of a of a tournament, but I'm, I'm trying. Now, you can change who plays in the game, and I'm not 100% certain what all of these are or where they are on the court. That's one of my complaints is that the game doesn't explain what the different positions are. The setter, I I can figure out it's, you know, it's the one that when the ball first comes over the net, the ball goes to them or well, one of the one of the blockers blocks the ball, goes over to the setter. The setter sets it to one of the other players who can then spike it or they can just loft it over the net. But the game doesn't explain any of the positions, so if if you have no idea like anything about volleyball, you're probably going to be lost. You're not going to have any idea. And and it's really these three that I'm I'm kind of confused about, middle blocker, outside hitter and defender. I want to say the defender is the one who's right by the net. So, knowing that or guessing that, I'm going to want Lewis there because they have the best jump. They can block the best. 
And then outside hitter, I believe, is the one who's furthest to the back. So I'm going to want somebody with decent dexterity. And then the middle blocker, I think that's the one at the top. I'm going to put you in there. But yeah, it, it would be nice for the game to explain these things. Um, you can't play any of these other matches, so you just got to skip through them. So now we can get into this match. I don't know why you would ever be a spectator. I, I don't know if you can just sit out. I've never done this, if you can just sit out a game. But I'm not going to do that. You either end up on the left or the right. It's usually the left. Sometimes it's the right. I'm not sure what determines that. But here we go. So I'll go up to serve this. You press, I'm using the controller. You can also use the keyboard. The keyboard works just fine. I think the controller is a little bit easier for me. So I press A and I can either press A there or B to spike it or loft it. Ball comes over like that. It's kind of hard to explain all at once, but when you serve the ball, you can either press A to just do like a normal serve, normal height, or you can press B and it kind of lofts it over the net, so there, it's, there's more air time. In addition, you can either, with the analog stick or the D-pad, hold left or right. If I hold left and press A, it'll be a, a short serve, so it'll come down closer to the net. If I hold it to the right, it'll come down further away from the net. And the same with B. You can loft it so it comes down close to the net, loft it normally, or loft it so it goes further away. So let's try a long loft. See how high that goes and how far back it goes? I'm going to try to block this. Oh, okay. Managed it. Short loft. You can make them... Ooh, okay. There we go. That's pretty good. So, after you serve and the ball comes over, you use that person in the back, the defender or whoever they are. Ah, I tried to get the ball there with them. You use that person to hit it and then press one of the arrow keys. I totally missed it because I was talking at the same time. But you press one of the arrow keys to then pass it or set it to one of the other players. I'm going to do a short, short one here. This is a block. So y you can, you can move the ball around a bit and you can vary what your, um, damn it, I keep missing that one. And you can vary who you send the ball to, what kind of plays you're making. I can just dump the ball over there if I want to. I'm going to do a little spike here right by the net. That usually gets them. And it's uh, it's it's pretty good. I think we're going to 25 points here. I've, I've had some pretty close games. The AI seems like it's pretty good. Just when I think I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm going to win by just, like, spamming the same thing over and over again. Like, I could send it to the guy at the net constantly and just oops I missed I think I genuinely just missed I didn't that wasn't a wasn't uh one, one of the things I mentioned before with sometimes when your stats aren't high enough even when you press the button to to spike the ball or hit the ball or whatever it sometimes you just don't hit I just missed on that one. So I think, I'm trying to demonstrate this here. I'm just sending it to the, the guy at the net and having him hit it over. I've gotten a few points there. I'm hoping the AI is gonna catch on and be like, oh, you're, you're just sending it to the guy in front of the net and spiking it right over. It keeps getting them. 
I'm hoping that it's going to do the same thing that it did before. Oh, see, sometimes they sometimes they miss like that. It doesn't seem like the AI makes a lot of mistakes like that, but sometimes they do. I'm hoping that it's going to do what it... Oh, okay, I just missed on that one. Hoping that I can demonstrate... I don't know, that's always working. <laughs> that keeps working. Let's do a short one. They usually can't do anything about the blocks. Um, but I, I do think that this is a, a nice time. Oh, they missed again. And when you, when you go up to hit the ball, if you hit it at just the right time, you'll get kind of a, a boost in speed and power. So there, there is a bit of timing here. Man, I just keep getting them with that. Ah, uh, that's not good if you can just abuse that against the AI. They keep missing a lot, too. Um, but it, it is a good time. I like it. I think they have a good base for the game here. Come on, do something. Do something with that. Maybe that guy's just not good in that position. I don't know what their stats are, so... I almost missed that one. They can't do anything about the spikes. <laughs> they can't do anything about the spikes. Maybe their team just... Wow, maybe their team just sucks. I don't know. That was a soft one, too. I just lofted that. Come on. Big loft. That's an easy one. Wow! I think maybe this team just sucks. Because I'm rolling over these guys. Wow. I, I got to tell you, I've never had such an easy time here with the AI. They're just, they're messing up a lot. <sighs> well, I'm two points away from winning. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this. Unless they rally. That's an easy one. No block. I'm close. You guys better do something. Oh, I shouldn't have tried to block there. I thought it was going to end the game right there. That's okay. Boop. For the win? <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm going to have to I'm going to have to play another game cuz that's not that's not great if you can just abuse that. Spiking it at the net. I guess that I guess that one is hard to hit, but maybe maybe that's something that they should look at because that's that's easy to abuse. Maybe I can get to the finals here. Blockbusters, okay? Let's see. What do you got? No block. I'm going to keep trying that and see. Oh, boy. That's not good. How about a short loft? <laughs> Whoop. I almost didn't hit that one. Oh, wow. I missed. I may have I may have pressed the button wrong. And you should never, I should show this, you should never ever do a long spike because it, it'll always go out. Let me actually try you in the back. Oh, wow, I missed. <laughs> Let me try the long spike with the guy in the back because maybe he's far enough away from the net. No. I the long spike I don't I don't really know what the use is cuz it always goes out. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know if you can find the right player to use that with. Oh, wow, I totally missed that one. But there doesn't seem to be a use case for it. So, I don't know if that's intentional or oh, and it can hit the net too if you're not careful. I'm losing this one. 
But yeah, I'm not sure about the, the use case for it. Right now, with the long spike. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have gone for the, for the short spike. Okay. I just can't hit that one. Little loft. Mm. Ooh, okay. They hit it. I want to get like a long rally going, actually. <laughs> you can just dump it over like that. You don't have to spike it if you don't want to. Ooh, I got him with that one. I didn't expect that to work. Hmm, that's pretty good. Give me a long spike. That's a block. <laughs> I'm clawing my way back. I'm clawing my way back. And the, you know, the thing that I was just thinking about is I don't believe that there's an option in the exhibition mode to adjust how many points per game. Because cause 25 is pretty long. Ooh, they, they blocked that one. 25 is kind of a long game. Not It's not super long, but maybe a little longer than some people would like. Maybe you'd like it down to, to 15 so the game doesn't go on for quite as long. You can make him dive for it. That would be a nice option. And the, the thing that I had trouble with for a while was paying attention to what each player was was doing. Ooh. So I would I would set the ball and I, I don't think I was clear about who the ball was going to. So I would oftentimes end up looking at the wrong player. Although it should have been obvious because the the arrow keys um, on, oh, I shouldn't have done that. On the, the D-pad, if you're using a controller, match the position of the player that you're passing to. So, left on the D-pad will send it to the guy center back. The top will send it to this guy here. And the right will turn it to the guy right by the net. I don't know why I had trouble with that. Give you a little loft there. Uh, it also kind of confuses me when when the setter jumps up every time. I guess that's to try to confuse the other team or something, because it seems like the, the setter, let me see if I can make him do it. The setter seems to jump even when the ball's not, like, anywhere near him. Or, or that's not it. It's, it's other players jumping. And it, it just, it gets a little confusing. But as long as you know exactly who you're sending the ball to, you should be okay. Let me see if I can speed this up a little bit. Let me see if I can abuse that spike at the net again. But yeah, I, I think it's it's pretty good. There's there's a bit of timing involved with the game. Block? Damn it, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. It's okay. Let's have you do that. There we go. I'm actually, I'm a little surprised. Oh. I'm a little surprised at the, the lack of aggressiveness in, in the AI. Cause sometimes they'll, they'll spike the ball, but they're not, they're not doing what I'm doing nearly as much. Sending the ball to the guy right by the net and spiking it over. They always seem to go to the guy at the bottom of the screen. 
closest to the screen, closest to, to us watching on their side. Seems like they always set the ball to that guy. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Um, I'm not sure that, hmm, that's actually a good point. I haven't really seen them do a lot with other players on their team. That's actually a little odd that they keep setting the ball to the same guy. I gave you an easy one there. I think I can end this pretty quickly here. Ooh, okay, they actually got that one. See, sometimes they do. I'll, I'll spike it, and sometimes they'll get it. <laughs> but a lot of time they don't. I don't know if that's just a matter of the skill of the team that I'm playing against. But like, watch, watch the other team. Set, and it goes to the guy closest to the screen. Let's see it again. I've been paying super close attention, so I don't know if I don't know if they're actually doing that every time, but I think that they are. So it, it'd be nice to get a little variety in what the AI is doing, because they just seem to do the same things. Okay, they actually got that one. Lock again. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so one other pause here. At the end of the match, it doesn't explain how much experience points or how many experience points you've gotten. It just displays the score. So I don't know what I've gotten from the end of the match, whether I win or lose. And it, it would be nice to display how much experience points each player has gotten. And we can look at the other screen for that. On this screen, it shows which players leveled up, which that's fine, but there should be a lot more here. So this player must have gone up from level two to level three because they're barely at level three. It would be nice if there was an indicator on this screen that said, hey, this player went from level two to level three. In addition to that, here are the stats that increased for this player because they level up. Because I don't remember what I had this person training. And unless I'm looking at all the players' stats before a game and then looking at them after the game, I don't know what's increased. So that should be displayed on the screen. It should say strength has increased from... Or you don't have to write out a full sentence. Just have the previous stats on the left side in like gray text and then just to the right of it, the new stats that have leveled up are in green, so you can clearly see this character went from 10 jump to 12 jump, or something like that. And it should display progress bars for all of the players, even if they didn't level up. So then I can kind of see how much experience points everybody has gotten. I think it should also display the total number of experience points that each player has gotten. So I can see kind of a, a breakdown of who's getting how much experience points and stuff like that. So there, there needs to be a lot more here so I can understand what's going on with each player, what's leveling up, and all of that kind of stuff. I just wanted to point this out as well because I, I think there needs to be a lot more added onto this screen. So... Maybe the AI needs a little bit of work. I'm, I'm going to go all the way here. <coughs> Excuse me. I've never gotten this far. I'm very surprised, to be honest with you. Maybe my players are just that good. I'm not sure. Okay, now sometimes you end up on the right. Now, I, I've played on the right side before, and I get, I get a little messed up about who the ball is going to it it kind of it kind of messes me up because now the setter isn't close to the screen they're on the other side of the screen Let's see how good these guys are oh see now oh see now that's a little confusing because now i believe the up arrow yeah the up arrow is sending ooh is sending it to the player who's closest to the screen. I would expect it to go to the player 
who's furthest away. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, see, this is the problem I had before. I was pressing the up arrow and the down arrow, and it was sending it to the same person. That same guy close to the screen. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. Let me see here. Let me send it to somebody else this time. Yes, left will send it to the guy by the, the net. And then the right should send it to the dude middle back. Yes. Oh, you missed. God damn it. <coughs> I can't believe you missed. And then if I press A, that just dumps it over. Ooh. Hmm. Block? Ha ha ha. Oh, I am winning two to six. I thought I was losing, actually. Block? Ooh, I thought, <clears throat> I thought you might get that one. You didn't get it. Ooh, okay. I, there was no way to get that one. <clears throat> Be a little loft. Oh, I <laughs> I press the A button <clears throat> instead of the B button to block for some reason. But yeah, I'm I'm having a nice time with this. I think it's pretty good. Got that one. I just I. Looked at the wrong person. I was looking at the guy jumping at the net. This guy. There we go. Like I said, it gets a little confusing. Let's do a long one. Oh, jeez. Okay, this team seems a little bit better. <laughs> this team seems a little better. Oh. Oh. It's, it's tough with those short spikes. Even with the guy... Oh, actually that one works. Even with the guy right by the net. That's, that's why the jump stat comes in handy for that guy. That's a block. Ooh, you can still get it. Yeah, the other team wasn't doing that. With, um... Varying up the ooh, varying up the serves. So that's that's actually good because this team is a bit tougher. Maybe I can try to just spam that spike. See how they react. I'm gonna do that actually. I'm gonna spam that spike by the net and see how that goes. Will they do something about it? Or can they do nothing? Spikes are coming in pretty strong. Hmm. You gotta do some. You gotta do some. Oh, okay. I missed that one. I don't think they can do anything about that. That's uh, that's easy to abuse. Like I said before, it's still pretty good. It's, ooh, okay, that one, that one was really good. It's still a pretty, pretty good game. You know, this is an early access. I believe they said <clears throat> three to 12 months is what they were, were aiming for with, with the early access. So that's a pretty wide range. I guess, ooh, I guess they're really dependent upon what kind of feedback they're, they're gonna get. And I'm hoping that a video like this that they might see it, and it's going to help with the feedback. I also hope that it's helpful to see just gameplay, you know, unedited, not a bunch of cuts or anything like that, just some gameplay so you can see exactly how this works. This is a block. No, that's not a block. You know what I haven't been able to, to get to work is... 
Go Ooh, wow, you messed up. You thought that was gonna be shorter than it actually was. What I haven't gotten to work is if you miss a block, I'm not sure that I can still press the A button quick uh, quickly enough afterwards for the defender to, to set it up. So I, I don't know if I'm just pressing the buttons wrong or if you, you just can't do that. I don't know. That's a block. Ooh, nice try. Nice try. It's gonna be a long loft. Okay, I missed. That one I definitely, I did try to press the A button, but I, I the timing was nowhere near good enough for that. Nowhere near good enough. Short loft. I thought you weren't going to hit it. Another block. <laughs> Long one. Ooh. Good. Loft it. So yeah, I, I think that they've got a, a good... See, now that time I, I thought I had the, the block and then tried to press A. That didn't quite work. Block? Nope. Oh. I may have been able to go back. Now, the, the thing that I, I have noticed also is that when they serve it, <coughs> you can just serve it normally, or you could, you know, like loft it back and then they have to move to the back of the court to get it. Every time this comes over, I don't need to, and we won. I don't, I hardly ever need to move that character back and forth in order to try to get the ball. So I don't have to move closer to the net. I don't have to move further away from the net. It's a little odd. Also a little odd that none of my characters level up. That was a fantastic game. A little weird. I did win. Okay, I don't get... <laughs> I don't get anything for that. That's fine. So, after a season is done, after you play the eight games... Then you can recruit new players. <coughs> As you can see at the bottom here, it says, at the end of the season, third year players will leave the club, which means you have three years to train them. So all the players that I have now are year one. I'll have them for the second year, for the third year, and then at the end of the third year, all those players are gone. So ideally, you want to keep new players coming in I'm going to I'm not going to bother with the training. I'm I'm going to give you a little more gameplay here and just kind of talk about that. So Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Okay. So Oh boy, I'm on the right again. That's not good. So you don't want all of the players to be third years cuz that god damn it. Because then they'll all leave at once. So all the leveling that you've done, now you've lost all those players. So you'll want to keep recruiting people on a rolling basis so you can keep them trained up. And then you're not, you're not giving up a, a really skilled player. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you can... I think you have to block or set. I don't think you can do both but that's okay but you'll want to keep players coming in on a rolling basis at the end of each season you know maybe if if a player hasn't leveled up enough or something you can you can get rid of them and bring somebody else in i don't actually know if there's a player limit it it may have said somewhere i should probably get to the end of a season 
and see how many total players you can have on your roster. Or it might actually say somewhere in there that uh, how many players it is. I thought I was going to miss that one, actually. But yeah, it's Spike Air Volleyball. I missed that one. It's a good start. I, I like what they have going on here. I'd love to see more... I don't know why I did a long spike there. I'd love to see more additions to the exhibition mode. It would be... Maybe a little nice... Oh, wow, I missed that one. Maybe a little nice to have indicators on the screen. Like, maybe highlight the player when you set the ball to them. So it's, it's very clear and obvious who you're sending the ball to. Maybe nobody is going to have... Problems with that, maybe that's just a me problem, but I think that would be nice. Might also be nice to... In the... I guess I should wait until I actually get to the screen where you, you have the trainings. But it, it would be nice if there was a screen with just your roster. And you had like a little image of what a player looks like. Maybe you can customize the player a little bit. So you can better distinguish who's being trained. Because on the screen here, all of these characters are wearing number 10. So the number doesn't distinguish who they are. They don't have a name above their head or on their shirt or anything like that. So I actually don't know who is who. Um, unless you know what all the positions are, which I don't because I'm an idiot. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know... Again, maybe that's just a me problem. Maybe I'm just stupid and I don't know what each position is. I'm glad that hit the net because that was about to be a long spike. I don't know why I decided to do that. Um, but just having something on the screen that clearly indicates who is who would be nice. Both during a game and when you're training. Or just in a roster list would be helpful. Spike it. Ooh, you got that one, okay. I'm gonna spike it right at the net. There we go. So yeah, I've been going, oh my God, I can't believe you missed that. I think I've been going on long enough. It's a good game. If you're interested in Getting this in early access, you can do that now. I believe that it's it's something like $15 USD. I'm going to have to look that up and make sure I have the right price. It's not too expensive. I like what they have going on here. I think it's good. I think with more updates and more content, it'll be even better. I'm sure there are things... Oh, Jesus. That I, that I forgot to mention in this video, but... As the game develops, you can expect more videos about this game. And I'll talk about what they've added, what kind of new features they have, how it's progressing. I almost... I almost messed that one up. I had no idea who... <laughs> I pressed... I was pressing buttons and I had no idea who I was sending it to. That was not good. I should never spike, short spike the player who isn't closest to the net. Even when I spike it <coughs> to the player who's closest to the net, it can still hit the net and mess up. So anyway, um, pick up the game if you want to. I approve of it. It's nice. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'm going to continue playing this game and see if I can win this. Thank you for watching. Ooh, that was nice.